Thank you, Arden. Uh, wow, such inspirational ladies. I deliberately asked to go last because I'm such a nervous public speaker, but I'm beginning to regret my decision now because I'm a complete bag of nerves. Um, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here today as a guest rather than as a patient. Um, my name is Alex Davitt. I was born and reared in Ireland but moved to the US on this day, actually, a million years ago. I came here for a year of, ad of adventure, clearly not very adventurous. I'm still here. Uh, on Thursday, February 11, 2010, I went for my annual gynae appointment and I left 90 minutes later with a more than probable ovarian cancer diagnosis. And at the time, my kids were 16, 13 and 10. Panicked, I contacted my son's craniofacial surgeon here at NYU, who was phenomenal and got me a quick appointment with Dr. Curtin and his wonderful team here at NYU. And what followed was a whirlwind of tests and appointments and my surgery was scheduled for the following Wednesday which coincidentally happened to be Ash Wednesday and I mentioned that only because of course you know with surgery looming myself and my husband took ourselves off to the church before we came to the city if you're not familiar with the ritual of Ash Wednesday basically the priest has a bowl of ashes and he sticks his thumb and he paints this giant ash cross on your forehead so the reason I'm mentioning that is fast forward hours later Surgery is over. I'm just coming to in the recovery room, and this nurse looks at me and she says, Oh, you've seen the priest. I thought, Oh my God, I'm on the way out. Of course, she looks at my stricken face and she says, Your ashes. I'm like, She's trying to be chatty, and I'm thinking, Last rites. So, so while I wouldn't wish cancer on anybody, it has been in a weird way, the most overwhelmingly positive experience for me. I have met people I would never otherwise have met, and I have done things I would never otherwise have done. I did make a couple of decisions earlier on, and that was I was not going to ask about my prognosis, and I was going to stay away from the internet, as those stories were not my story. Uh, nothing like a little healthy denial to keep the glass half full. Uh, many people would argue an Irish glass is always half full, or at the very least, lined up for the barman's attention. Uh, joking aside, I decided to firmly pitch my tent in the Hope Camp and focus on what it would take to get me through. Uh, to occupy my mind, I took up something uh, to really kind of distract me on my tired chemo days. I've had a lifelong love of photography, but I'd never painted, and there was a friend of mine who'd taken a couple of amateur classes at our local art center and I said will you come on over and give me a few tips and she did so I took up painting specifically painting faces portraits of people and animals uh, I discovered for the first time in my life that it was something I could do that my head literally emptied of everything else and I just focused on the canvas in front of me and I loved getting out of my own head as anybody who's going through treatment knows it's not a good place to be I painted every day first of all I painted my family and my dog. I even painted Dr. Thorne and Dr. Curtin. Uh, what started off as a distraction has become a full-time career for me. I incorporated Alex David portraits in January 2011. Uh, the other thing I kind of focused on was knowing chemo would take its toll. I read somewhere that exercise would, would boost my immune system. So post-surgery, I started doing laps of my kitchen and family room until I could stand up straight enough to leave the house and walk around the block. Throughout chemo, I walked three miles every single day except my infusion days, and I finished chemo in early July, and I walked 39-mile New York City Avon walk with 55 women from my town that October. At, after the first 26 miles, we camped out in the cold in Randall's Island on the Saturday night, fortified by gin and tonics that my husband very kindly snuck in in a backpack. In 2011, I participated in a pilot program at the Rye YMCA called Live Strong at the Y. This is a national collaboration between the Live Strong Foundation and YMCAs. It is a free 12-week group, um, small group exercise program for adult cancer survivors. And basically what they aim to do is to transition people from disease to health and sort of promote a healthy lifestyle. 
for anyone here today interested in participating, if you literally Google Livestrong at the Y, then an interactive map will come up and show what Ys in your area it's offered at. If you contact them, you do not need to be a member of the Y to participate, and they will get you sorted. I highly recommend it. Um, my initial modest exercise goal of looping my kitchen and family room in 2010 has changed fairly dramatically, as Arden alluded to. My Livestrong coach at the Y has since become a dear friend of mine, and on August 16th, we will do the Statue of Liberty swim together, which is a 1.2 kilometer swim around the Statue of Liberty, which for somebody not from here is really cool. Um, and on November 3rd, we'll run the New York City Marathon together. The sad thing about this is I'm actually a much better athlete in my head than in reality, so both of these may prove to be spectacularly bad decisions on my part. Uh, hope, when, when, when uh, Arden first asked me to participate today. Uh, she did mention that you know she really wanted the patient panel to focus on the notion of hope and how it got us through. So lastly, I wanted to share with you a wonderful book that I came across early in the days of my recovery, and this is the book here. You'll have to forgive my dreadful French uh, pronunciation, but it says it's Le Très Riche Heure de Mrs. Mole by British cartoonist Ronald Searle, and loosely translates The Rich Hours of Mrs. Mole. Renowned more for his sardonic drawings, this Ronald Searle book is an adorable collection of 47 cartoon drawings of a female mole. On New Year's Eve 1969, Ronald Searle's wife Monica was diagnosed with a virulent form of breast cancer. They found a doctor who was prepared to help her fight the cancer, and she embarked upon 47 grueling chemo treatments. At the time of the cancer's appearance, the couple had just bought a house in the south of France and were beginning the long process of re renovation. Every time over the next five years that Monica went in for a round of chemo, Ronald Searle created a picture for her bedside, illustrating for her the riches of life and the future in the house that awaited her. Whilst Monica lay in a hospital bed, her alter ego, Mrs. Mole, lived in a world of sunshine and color, a world in which all the ordinary things in life are celebrated and enjoyed, from tea in bed, singing in the bath, dancing in the snow, quaffing champagne, to swimming in a very fashionable mole bikini. Against all odds, Monica lived for another 42 years, enjoying Mrs. Mole's life in Provence, though sadly she died before the publication of these wonderful drawings. On the face of it, a collection of cartoons about a female mole doesn't sound like much of a portrayal of hope or romance, but Ronald Searle's drawings create such a tapestry of love. I found it an inspiring tribute to the value of optimism, love, and a life worth living. I vowed that I would live like Mrs. Mole, and so should you. Thank you.